Hello and welcome to this short video where I'll be presenting to you the differences between a goal in a plan and an expense and showing you how you can really make the most of this fabulous feature in the Voyant software. So we're in the client's timeline and here we can see that we've got lots of different life stages, working and saving, we're winding down before we have a hard stop and retirement, age 65. Then we've got our earlier years of retirement, which we've called living the dream and our later life phase with mortality set to age 90. We've got three people in our plan. We've got Ben, Helen and their daughter, Lucy. So goals in Voyant are really quite special and they really allow you to bring to life clients' objectives. We've got on the plan a series of life events. So we are moving home next year. As we've already talked about on the timeline, we're going to be winding down when Ben gets to age 57. We're planning for a wedding, although it's a bit too far in the future to really know when that might happen, but we're setting some funds aside. We'd like to, one of our key client goals is to help their daughter pay for a wedding. We've got our hard stop. We might be buying a camper van for this stage of living the dream where we're going to be traveling around Europe in our camper van. And when we get to age 80, clients think that time their holidays will reduce and they'll probably start slowing things down. So in the dashboard or in the timeline, you can enter goals. OK, but I'm going to go back to the dashboard because what I want to do is roll back a bit and help you understand a little bit about the difference between a simple expense in the plan and a goal. So we've got some expenditure in this plan and right now we've got our day-to-day -day spending, obviously not including their mortgage, and we've got some discretionary spending for both Ben and Helen. Now what I've done with the spending is I have actually cut that off at the point they retire. So their spending, all of their expenses in the plan, will finish at the point of retirement. The reason I've done it like this is because a key part of the reason why Ben and Helen are sitting down with us is to discuss their retirement planning and to consider their aspirational spending in retirement. And anything that I would consider aspirational or an objective for the client, I would try and enter as a goal. Because what you'll find when you enter goals is that you can track the progress towards that goal. And there is also a really nice follow up report that you can send to the client once you've done your presentation. We're going to look at that in a little while. So we've got our expenses in the plan and we've got our day to day spending and our discretionary spending here. And now I'm going to show you how to enter a goal. So if I click on the plus sign, as with any new item in the plan, I go to goals. So the reason we've categorized pre-retirement and retirement is really to make it easier for you from a timing perspective, because what Voight will do is it will predetermine the timing of that goal to suit their pre-retirement years or their retirement years. Now, of course, in Voight, you can change the timing so you can edit that and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and the milestone goal is a one off expense. OK, so that's just a single expense like the camper van, like the wedding. OK, anything like that. Education goals are quite significant as well, because an education goal will allow you to create a, um, a university a goal in the plan. And actually, it will pre-build the timing of that, the, um, the time horizon from the child's 18th birthday or 18th year in the plan until they're 21. Net worth goal is new in Voyant. And that is going to be where you can set your ideal net worth at a future point in the plan and Voyant will show you if that is achievable or not. So because we're planning here post retirement, I'm going to choose my retirement goal. And the goal is owned by Ben and Helen. That's fine. And I'm going to edit this and call this um, day to day spending in retirement. OK, I can put my amount. So this is exactly the same as if I were entering an expense. OK, in as much as 
I can choose an annual amount, I can choose a monthly amount, I can reset the inflation on that, I can choose what level of priority it is. So this is the absolute highest priority, okay? So I've, I've set it as such. In the details panel, if you wanted to, you could set your goal based on itemized expenditure underneath the bonnet. So you could just add up all, all of their individual um, expense items if you wish. You can base it on their current income now, or like we've done, we've just got a set fixed amount. In the timing panel, you'll see, as I previously mentioned, that Voyant will pre-select retirement as the period of time where we're going to start this goal and mortality or the end of the plan when that will finish. But if you have stages in your plan and you want your goal to span a specific stage in the plan, then all you have to do is click on that stage and Voyant will automatically change that time horizon. You could, of course, create another event and link the um, goal to a specific event, even if you've not already built that on the timeline. So I'm just going to change that there. As with expenses, you can also step change your goal. So it might be that spending in the earlier years of retirement, you want that to be higher than the later years. So you could add a step if you wanted to, exactly like you can with an expense. You can also select a payment source for the goal. OK, so you can set if you know that there's a specific pot of money that you want to fund that goal, um, especially I suppose with education planning, oftentimes clients will have a pot of money where they've been saving for those university fees and they want to designate that pot to pay the fees when they're relevant in the plan. So you can do that. You can create a payment source. So that's our basic goal. Now, if I were adding a series of goals, I'd click, of course, on this little drop down and save and add another. But I want to take you back now to the dashboard to show you how that now looks in the plan. So you'll notice immediately that the black line has increased a bit to reflect our additional spending in retirement now. But we've got this new section here for goals. And now here we have our day to day spending in retirement and we can see we can meet that goal for the whole time and how much that is. So I really like this progress bar. I think it's a really visual aid for your clients when you're presenting to them and of course if they can't meet their goals and when we put all of the goals in for this family you will see that there is a bit of a shortfall if we can't meet their goals then we can start to look at okay each time we sit down are we making more progress towards your goals so it feels good it feels nice so let's just add some other goals in spending and I'm just going to say that's 15,000 per annum it's a more medium priority I don't need to do anything with the timing so I can save and add another it takes me back to my retirement goal up here okay so I don't have to go back to the dashboard so I'm going to call this holidays and again we're going to really break the budget so we're going to have £10,000 in those early years of retirement and this is a bit less of a priority I suppose although some would argue differently holidays are quite important here we go so add a step so I'm going to reduce this down to say 4000 at the point in the plan where holidays reduce there we are so I'm done with my retirement goals so now we're starting to see that the plan is under a bit of stress. OK, so we've got here our day to day spending. You know, that's now not going to be it for all of the plan and our discretionary and holidays are really going to suffer. Let me show you what it looks like to add that education goal, because it's quite unique in as much as it will set the events for you. So I'm going to choose Lucy as the owner of this goal and I'm going to call this Lucy Uni. Let's say a thousand pounds a month. Fairly high priority to this family, actually. OK, so it's going to sit there. Now, when I go to the timing panel, Voyant recognizes that it's a university event, so it creates these events for you. So 
basically, if you want to keep them, you just select yes. But if you have already got your graduation and university events in your timeline, you don't have to keep them. You can just say no and then they will disappear. So that's quite a nice feature. So that saves you a little job. So, so in a nutshell, when you enter a goal, it has a lot more prominence in Voyant. OK, we've got a whole section on goals here. You've got the progress bar which is very nice. And you can really draw attention those key events and objectives that we're planning for for this family. Same thing in the timeline that here in the bottom left corner, we have all of the goals um, that we've entered into the plan. We do have a separate video on the goal priority insight, but as we're talking about goals right now, I'll just give you a very high level overview of this very special simulation. So because my client has read in their plan, what the goal priority analysis does is allows me to start to open up the conversation around, okay, how important really are these goals to you? Because if we don't do any more saving, um, you know, everything happens as we're assuming from, from now, you're not going to be able to do everything, okay? So what we can do is we can start to say, okay, well, if we switch off the holidays, what does that do to the rest of the plan? Does it free up the budget? And in this case, absolutely it does, that we can now do all of our other things up until the age of 80, almost 81 there. So it's a really, I, I suppose it's a worst case scenario because, you know, you spend a lot of time discussing the client's goals and objectives. Um, and really we want to make those things happen where we can. Um, but this is a great way to sort of help clients really understand the impact that some of those goals will have on their plan in, in, in its entirety. So if I go to reports now, we've got this really lovely report, okay, events and goals. So I'm just gonna add that and generate it. And this can form obviously part of a wider, larger report, of course. And what I like about this is it, again, it's just emphasizing why are we here? What are we planning for? So we've got our timeline there, which is really nice visual, all of the key events. And you know, I might even give this to the client as a bit of homework. So if we haven't got a lot of events or goals on the, on the, on the timeline for them, I might give them this report and just ask them to sort of manually, you know, sit there together with a pen and paper and just like kind of draw things into the timeline um, to really sort of help them to consider the bigger picture. And then our goal funding status is really nice as well. And actually there is also in the report section, there is also a very nice education summary. So let me just come out of here, go back in, go to education summary. So when you've got an education goal, this is quite scary actually, especially if your clients are school fees planning. So if they've got children that go into private school, this will actually um, rather scarily tell them how much in total their school fees will cost them in their plan. And that, that can be quite a large number. So um, that's quite a nice report as well if you are adding in an education goal. So hopefully that short video just gives you a little um, overview of how to use goals in your plan. I really would encourage you to use them because I think it does help to bring everything to life for you and your clients um, and I hope you enjoy using them. Of course, as with anything, if you need any support or guidance, please contact support at planwithvoyant.com and we will be more than happy to discuss this further. And thank you very much for watching. Wish you a very pleasant day.